welcome to this episode of the weekly News Roundup. Prime Minister Narendra Modi conducted a two-day visit to Moscow from July 8th to July 9th at the invitation of Russian President Vladimir Putin to hold the 22nd India-Russia Annual Summit. This was Modi's first visit to Russia since Moscow invaded Ukraine in February 2022. His last visit to Russia was in 2019 when he attended an economic conclave in the Far East city of Vladivostok. The annual summit between Modi and Vladimir Putin is the highest institutional dialogue mechanism in the strategic partnership between the two countries. According to an official release, Modi and Putin reviewed the entire range of multifaceted relations between the two countries and exchanged views on contemporary, regional and global issues of mutual interest during their meeting. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had a one-on-one -on -one private dinner with Russian President Vladimir Putin on July 8th. The last meeting come private dinner PM Modi had with President Putin in the Kremlin was in 2015 and that extended into the early hours of the next morning. And this time, the Indian PM is being hosted at the private residence of the Russian President. We bring you this report. While PM Modi will be physically confer the Order of St. Andrew the Apostle, the highest state decoration by the Russian Federation, the visit to Moscow assumes significance as India seeks to deepen as well as strengthen its energy ties with the Federation with Europe, procuring energy supplies from West Asia at higher prices due to Ukraine war. India will also be looking at various routes including the Arctic route to evacuate energy from Russia as well as investing more money into the energy sector of the Federation. However, the key discussions between the two leaders will be on the Ukraine war as the long-drawn war continues to destabilize the global markets and security situation given that PM Modi has had first-hand views of the G7 leaders on the Ukraine war during the Italy summit last month. He will be able to impress upon President Putin the futility of carrying on a long-drawn campaign and urge him to return to the negotiating table. PM Modi is one of the few global leaders who have an excellent personal equation with the Russian leader and both have mutual respect for each other. While PM Modi will ask President Putin to put an end to the recruitment of Indians to fight the war against Ukraine, he will also seek to deepen cooperation with Russia in the field of space and nuclear energy. Russia has also agreed to discharge and facilitate the return of all Indians fighting for the Russian army in Ukraine, a major breakthrough achieved during Prime Minister Modi's visit to Moscow, sources said. The development came after PM Modi took up the matter with Putin during the private dinner on Monday, the sources added. India, a key global economy, has close ties with both Russia and the US and its partners and officials in Delhi are playing down questions over the timing of Mr. Modi's trip. They say the annual summit is a part of a long-standing strategic partnership and its scheduling has nothing to do with the NATO summit. But a sour note has been struck with the US expressing concern. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller urged Mr. Modi to emphasize Ukraine's territorial integrity during his talks in Moscow. Mr. Modi told President Putin that India was ready to offer any assistance in establishing peace in Ukraine. Russian State TV quoted him saying that war was not a solution. India and Russia share close defense and strategic relations from Cold War days and Moscow remains a key supplier of weapons. India, which maintains one of the largest militaries in the world, has long-standing border disputes with its neighbours Pakistan and China. India is aware that it needs both the United States and Russia to counter its rival China. Hence, it feels the need to strike a balance, not to offend either of the two. From Russia, we move to the United Kingdom, where Sir Keir Starmer has become the UK Prime Minister after the Labour Party's landslide victory to the UK polls. Labour's resounding election victory ended 14 years of Conservative government. Prime Minister Keir Starmer took office in Britain on Friday and promised a national renewal after his centre-left Labour Party won a landslide election victory that decisively swept the Conservatives out of power, but pointed to a dissatisfied and fragmented nation. 
while Labour's more than 410 seats in Parliament ensured the party a robust majority, the breakdown of votes and the lowest turnout in years indicated the challenges ahead for Mr. Starmer. We bring you this report. Labour has won the UK general election in a landslide. The new Prime Minister, K.A. Starmer, pledged to steer the country towards calmer waters in his first address to the nation. Starmer is starting to form his cabinet. The Conservative Party lost more than 250 seats, its worst ever defeat, and now faces life in opposition. The outgoing Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, pledged to resign as party leader. Several cabinet ministers lost their seats, as did former PM Liz Truss. Nigel Farage's populist Reform UK party won its first seats and came second in many more splitting the right-wing vote and contributing to the Conservatives' losses. The Liberal Democrats will be the third biggest party in Parliament after its best result in years. The Greens made gains while the Scottish National Party suffered a collapse, losing nearly 40 seats, most of them to Labour. Britain's new Prime Minister Keir Starmer has started to name his cabinet, including appointing Rachel Reeves as the country's first ever female Chancellor of the Exchequer or Finance Minister. Earlier, the Labour leader made his first speech as Prime Minister, promising to steer the UK towards calmer waters during his time in office. The centre-left Labour won the election by a landslide, securing the biggest majority in its history. Party leader Keir Starmer celebrated the victory in front of supporters in London. He said, change begins now. It feels good, I have to be honest. Rishi Sunak formally tendered his resignation to King Charles before Starmer had his audience with the monarch, who asked him to form a government. Starmer then travelled to Downing Street to address the nation before he and his wife Victoria entered number 10 for the first time. In his first speech as Prime Minister, Starmer pledged to steer the UK towards calmer waters after 14 often turbulent years of conservative rule. He said, You have given us a clear mandate and we will use it to deliver change, to restore service and respect to politics, end the era of noisy performance, tread more lightly on your lives and unite our country. Starmer has announced a number of cabinet appointments with Angela Rayner, named Deputy Prime Minister, as well as Secretary of State for Leveling Up, Housing and Communities, the outgoing Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said that he will leave his post as leader of the Conservative Party in an address to the British public outside Downing Street. I have heard your anger, your disappointment, and I take responsibility for this loss, Sunak said after delivering the party's worst ever defeat. Rachel Reeves has been appointed by Keir Starmer as the UK's new Chancellor of the Exchequer or Finance Minister, becoming the first woman to hold the role. The daughter of teachers, Reeves studied politics, philosophy and economics at Oxford University before taking a graduate job at the Bank of England, initially tasked with analysing how Japan attempted to emerge from its period of stagnation in 1990s. Britain's economy today faces a similar challenge. Since the financial crisis of 2008, Britain's economic growth has mostly flatlined. Reeves said the years of political instability that followed was a product of the economic harm wrought by austerity. She called the failure to invest when the government could borrow cheaply an act of historic negligence. What is clear is that Labour is not promising overnight fixes to Britain's malaise. Starmer and Reeves say they hope to embark on a decade of national renewal. Reeves said in a post on X, I know what responsibility it brings and I am ready to deliver the change our economy needs to make working people in all parts of the country better off. British Prime Minister Keir Starmer has appointed Angela Rayner as Deputy Prime Minister. His office announced in a post on X on Friday. Rayner will also serve as Secretary of State for Leveling Up, Housing and Communities. Several senior Labour MPs have been seen entering Downing Street, where Starmer will name his cabinet. We move to the Vatican, where latest news says that Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano, the former Apostolic Nuncio to the United States of America, 
has incurred the penalty of excommunication for having abandoned communion with the Bishop of Rome and the Catholic Church. Now, what is the case against Archbishop Vigano? Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano served as the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States from 2011 to 2016. He has been an outspoken critic of Pope Francis and of the Second Vatican Council. The Vatican Doctrinal Office has declared the excommunication of the former Nuncio to the United States, Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano. The office has also found him guilty of schism because of his public statements saying he does not recognize the authority of the Pope or the Second Vatican Council. At the end of June, Vigano expressed his opinion on the process that he was being subjected to by the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith. No reconozco la I do not recognize the authority of either the court that claims to judge me, its prefect, or those who appointed him. In 2018, Archbishop Vigano released an 11-page letter accusing Pope Francis of covering up the alleged sexual abuse done by American Cardinal McCarrick. Vigano has since continued to reject the authority of the Pope and the Second Vatican Council. We move now to the war in Ukraine. And at latest news coming in, Ukraine's largest children's hospital was hit by a Russian missile, injuring many. The children's hospital in Kiev has been hit after Russia launched a wave of missile strikes against cities across Ukraine. Two people died when the Omadit Children's Hospital, Ukraine's biggest pediatrics facility, sustained major damage during the blast. A day of mourning has been observed in Ukraine after one of the worst waves of Russian missile strikes in months. At least 41 people killed and 166 injured. The main children's hospital in the capital Kiev was among buildings hit in cities across the country on Monday. Two people died when a missile flattened part of the Okmadit Children's Hospital, Ukraine's biggest pediatric facility. And a search for survivors beneath the rubble continued into the early hours of Tuesday. On Monday, Russia denied targeting the Kiev hospital, saying it had been hit by fragments of a Ukrainian air defense missile, while Ukraine said it had found remnants of a Russian cruise missile. 36 people were killed and 140 people were injured in the strikes, President Volodymyr Zelensky's chief of staff, Andy Yermak, said. Russia denied targeting the hospital, saying it had been hit by fragments of a Ukrainian air defense missile, while Ukraine said it had found remnants of a Russian cruise missile. Vitaly Klitschko, Kiev's mayor, said the two who died at the hospital were adults one of whom was a doctor. He added that rescuers feared more people were trapped under the rubble. So right now, the whole world see how Russian missiles and kamikaze drones killed uh, Ukrainian citizens, our peaceful city. Please don't listen to Russian propaganda. They always find excuses. They, they always try an explanation. It's not a war, it's special operation. They, uh, they destroyed the uh, critical infrastructure of our hometown and explain uh, the, uh, they try to hit uh, the military objects uh, it's not true. It's uh, three years long. The Russians destroyed Ukraine. Putin need Ukraine as property. Us Ukrainian, he don't need. And that's why I call that genocide of Ukraine population. Omadit is a major hospital which carries out cancer treatment and organ transplants. Hospital officials told Ukrainian TV that about 20 children were being treated in the ward which was hit. Mayor Klitschko accused Russia of attempting the genocide of the population in Ukraine. The mayor added that a separate maternity hospital in Kiev's Dniprovsky district has been partially destroyed by falling debris, killing seven people. Mr. Zelensky wrote on social media that more than 40 missiles of different types had hit buildings and infrastructure in cities including Kiev, Dnipro, Krivri, Slovyansk, and Kramatorsk. The 
she will love you. World leaders allied to Ukraine have condemned the attack, including the new British Prime Minister Sir Keir Starmer. He said attacking innocent children was the most depraved of actions and promised continued support for Kiev after the change of government in the UK. Calling the strikes a horrific reminder of Russia's brutality, US President Joe Biden said additional support for Ukraine's air defense systems would soon be announced. Mr. Zelensky said that Russia had launched more than 40 missiles on Monday, damaging almost a hundred buildings. Pictures from the scene of the blast at Kiev Hospital, which specializes in cancer treatment and organ transplants, showed children hooked up to IV drips sitting outside the damaged facility, awaiting evacuation. Rescue workers and medics dug through the rubble to look for survivors though it was unclear how many were still trapped. Russia habitually denies targeting civilian infrastructure. It claimed the hospital was hit by a Ukrainian air defense missile. The statements by the regime in Kiev about Russia's allegedly deliberate missile strike on civilian sites are absolutely unreal, the Russian Ministry of Defense said in a statement. But military analysts are adamant that the attack on Omadit was deliberate. They say Russia used the whole spectre of missiles backed by Iranian-made Shahid drones and struck during daytimes to exert moral and psychological pressure. A senior Ukrainian military official said they struck Omadit to hit a nerve so that the Ukrainians, Kivians, get emotional and pressure their leaders to agree with a Kremlin proposed plan that would force Ukraine to recognize Moscow-occupied parts of Ukraine and Crimea as parts of Russia. Responding to the devastating hospital attack on Monday, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky wrote on X, There are people under the rubble, and the exact number of casualties is still unknown. Right now, everyone is helping to clear the rubble, doctors and ordinary people. Russia cannot claim ignorance of where its missiles are flying and must be held fully accountable for all its crimes. It is very important that the world does not remain silent about this now and that everyone sees what Russia is and what it is doing. Ukraine has been attacked by the military Ради безпеки ООН в зв'язку з російським ударом по цивільній інфраструктурі, включно з дитячою лікарнею. Безперечно, ми все, що зруйнували ці терористи, ми відновимо і безперечно, ми відповімо цим нелюдам з Росії, нелюдям з Росії. Кожному, хто постраждав, зараз надається необхідна допомога і обов'язково ми маємо всі працювати над тим, щоб притягти до відповідальності Росію за терор і Путіна за накази, завдавати удари. From Ukraine we move to Austria. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reached Vienna on Tuesday as part of a two-day visit to Austria. This is the first visit by an Indian Prime Minister to Austria in over 40 years. Indira Gandhi was the last Indian Prime Minister to visit the country in 1983. During his stay in Vienna, Prime Minister Modi called on President Alexander van der Bellen and held talks with Chancellor Nehammer. Both leaders also addressed business leaders from India and Austria. The two countries explored ways to further deepen their relationship and closer cooperation on various geopolitical challenges, officials said. PM Modi also interacted with members of the Indian community in Vienna. Last week, Foreign Secretary Vijay Quatra called Austria an important Central European country which offers excellent opportunities for bilateral cooperation in infrastructure, renewable energy, high technology areas, startup sectors, media and entertainment. We bring you this report. PM Modi will call on the President of the Republic of Austria, Alexander van der Bellen, and hold talks with Chancellor of Austria, Karl Nehemmer. The Prime Minister and Chancellor will also address business leaders from India and Austria. Earlier, Prime Minister Modi said that the shared values of democracy, freedom and the rule of law 
form the bedrock upon which the two countries will build an ever closer partnership. PM Narendra Modi arrived at the Hotel Ritz Carlton in Vienna and was welcomed by members of the Indian community in a video shared by the news agency PTI. PM Modi was observed standing as a group of artists in Vienna sang Vande Mataram accompanied by violinists and guided by the concert master. Praising the musical culture of Austria, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that he got a glimpse of it by witnessing an amazing rendition of Vande Mataram. Prime Minister Modi thanked Chancellor Nehemma for his warm welcome and affirmed that India and Austria will maintain their collaborative efforts moving forward. PM Modi's remark came a day after Austrian Chancellor Nehemma said, "I very much look forward to welcoming Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister of India, the world's largest democracy." This visit is a special honor as it marks the first visit by an Indian prime minister in over 40 years and a significant milestone as we celebrate 75 years of diplomatic relations with India he said we will have the opportunity to talk about the further deepening our bilateral relationship and closer cooperation on the many geopolitical challenges the austrian chancellor said thanks so much for watching this episode until we meet next time Stay blessed.